Hi guys, it's me, JJ. Welcome back to the Ratchet Diaries. So yeah, you guys, today is May 1st of 2024, which means it is officially my four year anniversary in the Powerpuff Museum, Powerpuff Girl Museum apartment. And um, yeah, you guys, I can't believe it's been four years since I moved here. Um, I know living in a place, you know, for four years or having an apartment or whatever is not that big of a deal to most of you guys who haven't had traumatic living situations in the past. But for Miss JJ, it is a huge fucking deal because before living here, I was moving every single year. Um, even less than a year because I remember thinking like a few months after I moved here I was like, oh man, what a dream it would be to like finish my 20s, you know in this apartment and That's exactly what we're doing um, Obviously, I signed my fifth year lease since we're still here. So we're gonna be here for five years, which is crazy um, I, I really am just I'm so grateful and so happy to still be in this apartment it means the entire world to know that I've had a stable place to li live. I've had a stable place to live for this long um, because essentially the only two places I've lived for four or more years is the house that I had in Branson, Missouri. I lived there till I was eight, so zero to eight. And then the house in Lenexa, which I actually visited um, when I was in Kansas City for the bridesmaid video, so if you want to see that house, that was the only other place that I've lived up until four years. But yeah, you guys, I thought today would be the perfect day to start the new update of 2024. So without further ado, let's get motherfucking started. In January, um, as I said in my Christmas video last year, we put Maisie into training classes. Um, unfortunately, they did not work. She's just really young and just does not have the attention span, um, you know, to learn. So that was kind of a waste of time and she's still not trained. Um, but her birthday is coming up at the end of this month. So I'm really excited to celebrate her, you know, her first birthday. She's going to be one on May 26th. Say hi. Are you dirty? You need a bath. You need a baffy. <laughs> Who's your baby? Say hi. Hi, Richard Diaries. Who's your baby? Hi, baby. So yeah, guys, she's doing pretty good. You know, um, she did have to go to the vet twice already this year. Um, but now that it's officially May 1st, we had April off of the vet and I had February off the vet. Um, so, so far this year, Hasn't been every single month of having to take her to the vet, so that's amazing. So yeah, that's a little update on Maisie. So yeah, you guys, um, starting off the year, um, I didn't have a job. So, you know, as I said in my Christmas video, which was the last time I filmed last year on Christmas, um, I had quit Elite Cannabis. It had put me through enough. Starting off January of this year, um, we pretty much just decided to take like almost, you know, two to three weeks just to rest and recharge and heal from that job and just how busy and crazy things were the last few months of the year. So it was very important to me to like be able to take that time and you know, I was lucky enough to have the money to do that. So I you really did get to just take almost the whole month of January to just rest and stay home and recharge and all that stuff. And then, um, so yeah, by the, like, I think by the, I think it was like the third week of January, I finally got, you know, sick of being home all the time. So I finally started doing applications and I already knew that I was done with the cannabis industry. There's just no accountability in that job and I'm sick and goddamn tired of being the scapegoat in those jobs. So I decided, you know, okay, maybe, you know, now that I have a dog, we can do like some dog care or whatever. And so I had done a lot of applications for like taking care of dogs or boarding dogs or, you know, as a dog walker or whatever. And all of them kept getting denied. So a lot of the other kind of recommendation terms of uh, applications and stuff that would come up was like caregiving for like old people. So long story short, you know, I had applied to be a caregiver um, um, for home watch caregivers and long story short, you know, I went on the interview for that job and got hired on the spot, which was amazing. And so, yeah, we went in like a few days after the interview to do orientation and 
um, training, which was all in just like a one day situation at their home office all the way in Longmont. And so yeah, so then I started working my first day with my main client who I'm still taking care of now. Her name is Lori. Um, I am still taking care of her three times a week. I do 12 hour overnight shifts. So I work with her Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning. So I just get, you know, my full time hours in three days, which is great. And I'm still there and I really, you know, has, it's not a hard gig, you know, it's just essentially just, you know, helping her go to the bathroom and, you know, feeding her or, you know, doing whatever, refilling her drinks. And, and then by like, you know, end of February, I was like, this isn't enough money, even though it's, you know, full time, 19 an hour. I was like, I still need another job. So I spent pretty much all of like end of February into March um, applying to just work part time somewhere. Um, so long story short, I also am now working at Buffalo Wild Wings. Started Buffalo Wild Wings March 17th, and so we've been doing both jobs um, uh, every week since then. So I'm working 50 hours a freaking week, which is exhausting. But you know, she's got to do what she's got to do. Funny enough, my like right after I think it was my second week at Buffalo Wild Wings, I got a really bad cold. I think it was like the 26th I had worked, and that was the first day it got really bad. I was like blowing my nose. The whole day I was working at Buffalo Wild Wings that night. And so then it really sucked because I had to get up really early the next day um, for a doctor's appointment that had nothing to do with the cold. It was like just a yearly checkup to get, you know, blood drawn and labs and blah, blah, blah. And so I went to that. Obviously I was feeling absolutely horrible. You know, I ended up taking like a little bit extra cold medicine that I probably shouldn't have taken. Um, you know, to just kind of like get through the symptoms and just get through the doctor's appointment because obviously I was just like, it's 8.30 in the fucking morning. I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. I feel like shit. Um, so anyway, long story short, I uh, leave the doctor's office. You know, I'm already like really sick. I'm on a little too much cold medicine. I, you know, I just had five or six tubes of blood drawn. And so we were like, okay, like, let's just run these two errands and then I can go home and rest the rest of the day because I had taken off, um, I had called off of my caregiving job so I could have the whole rest of that day off um, to rest or whatever. And then, um, yeah, so I do my eyebrows. I went to Dollar Tree to get some snacks and food and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, I'm like five minutes away from my house. You guys, it's right up the street at Wadsworth and everything. Um, I don't know what happened, but I think my brain just, I just think my brain just shut off and, uh, yeah, I ended up, uh, wrecking my car and totaling it. I ended up like, I guess just missing the red light. I think, like I said, I was just so out of it. So weak, so sick. And so, yeah, I ended up completely totaling my car. I, you know, uh, this guy, you know, they had the left turn signal cause it was red. So I was here, you know, then, you know, they're coming this way to turn. And like I said, I just, I think I just completely missed it somehow. And so I ended up hitting this guy like straight on. Um, and you know, luckily none of it, neither of us got hurt, but you know, we pulled over, exchanged insurances and you know, had to call the cops, get the cops there to do the police report. And luckily somehow my car was still drivable. So I ended up just driving it home. Um, but yeah, so um, that really, really obviously sucked because essentially for the whole month of April, I was without a car and I had to, you know, get a rental just so I could get to and from work, you know, like I, my caregiving job is all the way in Boulder. So it's like a 40 to 45 minute drive back and forth. So I couldn't, you know, just not have a car for a month. Um, so yeah, so then, you know, the week after, you know, I submit the claim and to my insurance and then they end up just being like, yeah, it's totaled. You just need to like sign it over to us and we'll give you the insurance money for it. And so, yeah, so Thursday, uh, I think it was, I think it was the fourth, um, the tow company came and picked up my car and I just remember, I was just like, when I came back inside after dropping them picking it up, I was just like crying. Goodbye, Courtney. I had a love-hate relationship with you, but fortunately, we have to say goodbye. I will say, she got me through some of the worst snowstorms 
that we had in Colorado the last couple years, so, but yeah. Bye, Courtney. <sighs> I'm just sitting in Courtney one more time with this exploded airbag. <sighs> so I was like, you know, you guys know, like I've, you know, in the past with Lyft and everything, you know, I've gone through hell driving here in Colorado. And so it just was really disappointing to lose that car. You know, I had just replaced the brakes and the rotors, you know, in September of last year. So, you know, I, you know, I had already paid off the $31,000 loan in a year and a half when I got the car. So it was just really devastating to be like, man, I could have had this car for like another, you know, four plus years and I just completely totaled it. Um, so that was obviously like extremely devastating and pretty much, you know, completely ruined the rest of my month in April. Um, and then, yeah, so as many of you guys know, if you watch my videos, I cut my mom out of my life in October of 2021. And so we really haven't had a relationship or really have talking at all in the last, you know, um, almost three years, I guess. And so, yeah, so my dad, you know, and ended up, you know, telling her what happened and how I got in a wreck and I told him my car and all this stuff. And so, you know, and then she ended up just being like, I'll help her, you know, get a new car, you know, I'll send her money and I can help in any way that I can. I help, I feel bad about this. So long story short, guys, um, the whole situation really could have ruined the rest of my year. Um, but because of my mom, um, she really ended up saving me and I ended up being able to get a new car. Um, and you know, I ended up having a court date obviously from the police report and the wreck. Um, but luckily that also ended up working out really well because I ended up getting a, a plea deal and the mail to pay, you know, the fine. And then that just ended up taking off the court date. So I ended up not having to go to court for that. So anyway, um, originally, you know, I go on CarMax and I find this certain car. It was a 2018 Forester. It was silver. I wasn't fully in love with it, but I was like, I don't have time to be picky, you know, and take my time picking out a car. Like I, I work almost every freaking day. I work almost, pr I work, pretty much do work every fucking day now. I ended up reserving that car and having it shipped to the CarMax here in Golden. And so then a week later after that was already on its way here, I ended up finding the same car, you know, 2018 Forester, but it was way higher tech and blue, which you guys know, it's my favorite color. Um, so I ended up reserving, they ended up letting me reserve both of them. So, um, so yeah, you guys, last Wednesday, the 24th, I picked it up and here's a picture and some videos of my new car. She is the 2018 Subaru Forester. This lovely shade of blue. Oh, yeah. Just like my Honda, I got the lovely sunroof. This one's fucking huge. Loves it. Clean, clean, clean. The interior in here, whoever had it before me, did such a fucking great job of taking care of it. Ugh, the seats are so fucking beautiful. Loves it, loves it, loves it. Nice and high techy. La, 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 la. I love it. It's really great. You know, ended up getting kind of an upgrade in terms of a better car um, than my Honda CRV. This Forester is like 10 times better. I really can't complain. It, it really did work out way better than I could have. So I'm just very grateful to God and my mom and my dad and everyone that was involved in helping me with this. So yeah. Pretty much this whole year, I have spent all of my free time essentially buying, booking, planning, 
gathering everything together for my Barcelona trip this year. So yes, I'm excited to announce that Mama JJ is going to Barcelona for her 30th birthday, which is in about two and so months. Um, so, so far at this very moment in time, everything's booked. I have the hotel, the plane, um, the attractions booked. All of my outfits are officially done. That was, uh, that was kind of difficult. Um, there's still a few more things that I've got to get together slash buy and plan for. Um, so we'll probably hopefully be finishing all of that up by the end of this month, but I'm really excited um, to finally go to Barcelona um, and live out my cheetah girls fantasy um, So yeah, you guys that obviously I'll bring you guys along for that. I'm so excited to finally go You know, I've been I've had this trip in my head since I was For a few years now for sure. I mean, I'd say like after Paris and London I was like that's next, you know, that was always Barcelona was always you know third after you know Paris and London I am about to go out to my favorite sushi restaurant in Denver. It's the most fancy uh, place. It's called Matsuisu or something like that. It's, uh, it's by Nobu, which Nobu is really famous in LA. Yeah, you guys, I think that is it for me. Um, I'll see, I might just film a little couple little phone videos at the um, sushi place. But until I see you guys next time, I love you so much. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Mwah. Bye. Celebrating four years in the Powerpuff Museum apartment by eating at the fanciest, best sushi place in downtown Denver, Matsuisu, I think that's how you say it. Last time I was here was my six month anniversary with my ex-boyfriend and we both broke up a month later. So yeah, excited. Happy four years in the Powerpuff Museum apartment. And to have a stable living situation, honey. That's the only reason I get to eat this and afford it. <laughs>Ah, you guys, just got out of there. About to go home and change and get ready for work. But um, this is like the first moment I've kind of like slowed down today. I, I just, it just blows my mind like to me and having like all the traumatic living situations that I've had in the past where... You know, in New York, I was almost choked to death. Chicago, I was almost evicted twice because of my roommate. Um, you know, Kansas City was just, I hated living there and was homeless in uh, New York and during COVID right before moving here. So today is just a huge milestone and I'm just so proud and happy and I'm just taking it all in. 